I'm here in Romans 1.16, and it says here in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, you know, right there it says that, you know, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Okay, And not only that, it, you know, it, it, it's available to everyone, you know, th that believes. Okay. Now, um, I had somebody ask me, basically, you know, how do they know whether they, or not they have a reprobate mind and that and, and whether or not they're just too far gone? to be saved. Now, let me tell you this, okay? Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. Okay? He was buried and rose again on the third day for your justification. Okay? And, you know, he... His arm's not short to where he can't save, okay? And he said that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, the gospel is good news. And according to Romans 1.16, uh, it says that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation, okay? And the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, how he died for your sins, according to the scriptures. Uh, you know, was buried on, and on the third day rose again, according to the scriptures. Now the scriptures also say that he tasted death for every man, that he died for the ungodly, um, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay. The Bible says that the gospel is, is you know, by which you're saved. And look, ju just the fact that you're wondering whether or not you're too far gone uh, proves that you're not, okay? <laughs> because, you know, you, it, it seems like you want to know how to be saved, okay? And look, Jesus Christ died for your sins, okay? And the Bible teaches that he is a propitiation uh, for our sins, but not our sins only, but the sins of the whole world, okay? And, you know, it means he's the atonement for your sins, and, and he wanted to pay your sin debt off, okay? So whatever bad that you've done in your life. Okay. If you believe on Jesus Christ, uh, your sin debt has been paid for. And look, because Jesus Christ died for everybody, okay, that means you qualify for the free gift of eternal life. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, it's a, salvation is a gift and it's a gift because, you know, you can't, you can't pay for it yourself. You can't earn it. Okay, because the Bible concluded that all human, you know, all that, that you know, that meant, Included all men under sin, okay? And so, you know, we can't use the laws of God in our defense and, and you know, act like or, or, tr or try, you know, convince God that we actually keep his law because, you know, the, the Bible makes it clear, no, no, we do not keep his law, okay? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, again, I want to emphasize that Jesus Christ died for everybody, okay? Um, because, you know, I, I don't know what teaching you've been under, 
or, or, or heard. Um, but, you know, uh, a lot of people that try to teach this thing about people being too far gone, um, a lot of them make assumptions about people, which can be very dangerous. And a lot of those people that make those assumptions uh, wrongly claim that Jesus Christ did not die for everybody. Okay. Now, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all men, especially them that believe. And Jesus Christ himself said here in John chapter 3, uh, starting at verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, Verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God, you know, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever means anybody. Okay. And Jesus Christ basically said in John 3.15 that, you know, anybody who believes on him uh, is not going to perish uh, but have eternal life. Okay. And down, down here in verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, the people that are condemned are the ones that don't believe on Jesus Christ for their salvation. Those are the people that reject the gospel and are trusting in them, themselves and their own works. Okay. But look, if you trust in yourself, you're never going to know if you're saved um, because one doing good, you doing good things doesn't pay for the bad stuff that you've done. Okay. You need Jesus Christ to pay for your sins. And two, you know, you also don't know how you're going to behave in the future. Okay. Now the Bible promises that we can have assurance of eternal life. And the Bible flat out says that we can know that we have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So right there, the Bible says that we can know. Well, how do we know? Uh, we believe on Christ. And here's why. Here's some more context of First John uh, 5.13. Here, here's First John 5.10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave him his Son. So it's saying that the people that be believe on Jesus Christ, you know, we have the witness in ourselves that we're saved. Okay. But the people that have not believed God basically accuse God of being a liar, right? Because they're basically, you know, not believing the record that God gave of Jesus Christ. So it's important to know what the record is, right? And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and that this life is in his son. Now, the Bible talks a lot about salvation, but the question, the, the question, what must I do to be saved, appears one time in the Bible and it's answered immediately. Okay. And look, this is the most important question in the world. Right? Uh, this Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16 asked Paul and Sil Sil uh, Silas, right? He asked them, what must I do to be saved? Okay. 
you know, they're must. What's the obligation? Right? What is absolutely necessary? Verse 31, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thine house. Did it, did it tell him that he has to change his life around and start treating people better, start memorizing the Bible or get water baptized or, or, or given to church or charities or quit cussing, you know, did it tell him, did it tell him you know, you, you not to sin anymore, right? Now, look, I, I'm not advocating sin. I'm simply telling you that the answer that they gave him is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe means to trust, okay? So, look, I, I implore you, um, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He really did. Die for your sins. He really does love you. Okay. And. You know. I, I, I hope this message gives you some peace. Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sins and for the sins of the whole world because it's it, it's the only way anybody can be saved okay and unfortunately many people uh, reject the payment and instead try to pay back God the, by themselves through their own works and, and that's just you know, it, it's it's just crazy to think that it, it it's like you'd be trying to bribe God. Um, you know, get look. Jesus Christ said that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So just take His word for it. <laughs> 